In this video, I will answer a simple question. If I had to apply the Agile mindset, the principles, the values, Agile practices to a business team, a non-technical, non-software development team to improve, to help them improve their effectiveness and efficiency, what would I do? First off, we won't have time in this video to go through the Agile manifesto, the principles, the values. Watch this video if you want more details. I really want to focus in this video actionable steps, things that you can implement right now with your business teams to help them improve effectiveness. But quickly, I'm giving access to my private Agile community to a lucky few for free. More details. If you want to join, more details in the pinned comment of this video. First off, I think it makes sense to define Agile. In simple terms, I define Agile in only three steps. First step is knowing where you are. Second step is knowing where you want to go. Setting clear objectives, measurable objectives. And the third step is taking action. Taking action to reach your goals. And at some point, reflecting, inspecting your results and adapting your goal your objectives, the action you take, the plan based on your reflection, based on your inspection, and all of this with a mindset of continuous improvement, a growth mindset. For me, that's agile in simple terms. So with a business team, you're trying to improve their effectiveness, their efficiency. You're not really applying agile. Yes, you're using the mindset. Yes, you're applying the practices, but your ultimate goal is really helping them improve helping them take action, reach their goals, inspect, reflect, adapt, continuously improve. That's your ultimate goal. That's how you make them more effective. The first thing I would do when supporting a business team is doing a simple workshop to clearly define each one, each member of a team's roles and responsibilities. Clearly define these two things. I've seen it many times in the past. Teams have been working together two years, three years, but are still confused on who does what in the team. <laughs> Who is expected to do what in the team? Wrong assumptions. I believe that Mary is supposed to do that. But it's totally wrong. It was never agreed that Mary was supposed to do that. That's why we need to clearly define her roles and responsibilities. Simple workshop. I would set up a simple board and let the audience, the team members, come up with all the roles in the team. So columns, one column, per role. And for each one of these roles, all the people that are not currently doing the role, they come up and they fill in all the things that they expect this person fulfilling this role to do. And at some point, all the columns will be filled. And the person actually doing the role will read all the things that people expect <laughs> them to do. And then they can explain their role and clarify on all these points. The goal of this simple workshop is clarity, transparency, so that everyone really knows, truly understands what everyone's role and responsibility is in the team. The goal of this workshop is clarity, transparency. By the end of a workshop, everyone needs to really, truly understand what everyone is supposed to be doing in the team. <laughs> Second is team agreement. I made a video in the past talking about the team agreement. You can watch that later. But basically, in a nutshell, you sit in a room, simple workshop. Again, the facilitator, usually the scrum master, the agile coach, the team coach facilitates the session and helps the team come up with a team agreement. Basically, how will we work together? How will we collaborate? How will we interact with each other? What is expected from each one of us? When are we starting work? When are we ending work? What if something happens after hours? How do we communicate with each other? Is it allowed to set up meetings during lunchtime? <laughs> do we prefer on-site meetings, meetings via Zoom? All the ways that we collaborate, put that in the team agreement so that there's no assumptions. But I don't believe, again, that Mary is supposed to be doing that. She's supposed to come at 9 a.m. every single day. So I'm mad when she doesn't come at 9 a.m. every single day. But we never agreed that she would be coming at 9 a.m. She's not even aware of that. Put that in the team agreement. Next is feedback. As a coach, I would first train the team all about receiving and giving feedback. How to give feedback, effective feedback, and how to receive feedback. After the training, we'll come up with a list of actions to help us give feedback and receive feedback from people in the team and maybe other people outside the team. We really want to build the habit of giving each other feedback. Maybe we can have a feedback day. We can say every two days, we all join a call for 15 minutes and we give each other feedback in breakout rooms. Let the team come up with all the ways they want to give each other feedback. Again, positive feedback, negative feedback, but effective feedback. <laughs> 
<laughs> Next is psychological safety. If a business team is not prioritizing psychological safety, there's a high chance that they are not psychologically safe. <laughs> a few months back, I made a video concerning psychological safety. You can watch it right here. But basically, in a nutshell, I need to be able to speak up in the team, ask difficult questions, challenge the status quo with a goal of innovation, being creative, helping the team improve without the fear of being shamed. Punished consequences, negative consequences to that. I would say that most teams <laughs> in companies around the world are not psychologically safe. And you need to work towards that. Help the team build this environment where they are safe, helping each other, giving feedback to each other, challenging the status quo, having tough conversations, speaking up with a goal of getting closer to their goals. <laughs> The goal of improvement, the goal of releasing, building a beautiful product that will satisfy the customer is hard to do. And you can't do that if we don't trust each other and if we are not in an environment where we can speak up. Psychological safety is important. Next, I would talk about the work. How does the work come into the team? Work comes to me. I need to work on something. How does it even come to me? From an external source, from a source inside the team? What needs to happen for me to start working on the thing? That's the definition of ready. Once I'm done with the work, what does done mean? Definition of done, two things I talked about here. Basically, clearly define what a piece of work looks like. What I expect, all the team members expect to be included in this piece of work. What does ready work look like so I can, I can actually pick it up and start working on it. And then talk about prioritization. How do we prioritize work? Do we work on multiple things at the same time? Or do we work on the thing that will bring most value to our customer or help us achieve our goals? And once I've talked about the work, definition of ready, definition of done, prioritization, I would make the work clearly visible on the board. Kanban board. You can watch this video right here for more details. Keep it simple when starting out. To do column, in progress column and done column. Try to limit work in progress. Someone can only work on one thing at a time. Teach them about the negative effects of multitasking and working on multiple things at the same time. At an individual level and also at a team level, you're slowing the team down when you're working on too many things. At the same time, the mindset of stop starting and start completing. Next, I might introduce maybe the Scrum framework, working in sprints. That's not for all business teams. Some teams, Kanban is more appropriate for them. But if you want structure, setting a goal for the next maybe one week or two weeks, everyone committing on achieving this goal together and tracking progress every single day with a Scrum board or with a Kanban board, but asking difficult questions, important questions with regards to the goal, planning our day in order to work together to achieve this goal, clear commitments, clear deadlines. I would simply help the team working sprints. It's not for everyone, but it really pushes the team when we have a set of clear goals, two-week sprints that we are all working together to achieve. Next, the daily scrum or the daily stand-up. Every single day, all the team members on site or remotely, first thing in the morning, we meet for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, time boxed to 15 minutes. We go through the work. Maybe we can answer the question, what did I do yesterday? What will I do today? And anything blocking me from doing what I intend to do today? Each one of the team members can answer this question or we go through the work. Each piece of work on the board, how can we get this as a team? closer to the done column. Some people think that the daily scrum, the daily stand-up is a status meeting. Ah, oh, status of each items on the board. What did I do yesterday? Status, status, status. No, it's a planning session. We are planning our day together. You plan your day individually, right? Why not plan your day as a team? You wouldn't start your day without planning your day, right? If you want to be effective, you need to plan what you're supposed to be doing today. You do that at an individual level. So why not do it at a team level? That's exactly what the daily stand-up is. We shouldn't be talking about resolving issues, about problems, about requirements, about priority. No, we should be talking about planning, planning our day together. We can still talk about all these other things after the daily planning session. <laughs> Let's focus 15 minutes on the planning. How can we work together today to achieve our goals? Next are retrospectives, sprint retrospectives, if the team is using sprints or any kinds of retrospectives. At some point, maybe monthly, the team can meet and we do a simple retrospective to reflect on how the past month, the previous month went in terms of the ways of working. 
in terms of our processes, in terms of our interactions with each other. What went well during a month? What can be improved? What can we learn from this month? What did we try? What did we experiment with? Did we fail? What can we learn from these failures? How can we do better in the next month to increase the chance of attaining our goals? These kinds of discussions are extremely useful if you want this mindset of growth continuous improvement with a business team i would schedule a retrospective at least once a month or when needed an example there was a critical issue we messed up <laughs> let's do a retrospective to find out how to not mess up again in the future if you want more tips insights on agile scrum personal growth click on the video that stands out the most on the screen right now and i'll see you in a few seconds